I'm going to show you a number of techniques here using polymer clay. Polymer clay is a byproduct of the uh, polyplastics industry. It's um, basically solid acrylic paint. And it can be mixed um, in the same way as you would mix paint. There are different brands on the market and some brands are better for some things than others are. What I'm going to be using today is a Primo and I'm using a blue pearl Primo along with a metallic gold Primo. Now it's absolutely vital to condition the clay really well before you start working with it otherwise you can end up with air bubbles and tears along the edges. So what I'm going to do is show you how to make a basic Skinner blend which is a uh, named after an artist called Judith Skinner who discovered the, the blending of clays which will blend one colour into another and give you an airbrushed look. So I'm going to start by conditioning the clay and then show you how to put that together. Okay. This is a basic um, pasta making machine which I wouldn't recommend you make pasta with after you use it for polymer clay but it's absolutely vital for, for use in the, with this. Um, depending on the brand <coughs> and the na sort of nationality of it, the, the numbers will vary. Um, this one, the widest setting is number one. Sometimes you'll get a machine and the setting will be number nine, will be the widest one. But set it to your, your fattest, widest setting when you first start to, to work it. And I have sliced my clay up um, just to make it easier to get through the clay. Some clays are, are much harder than others. This is quite a, a soft clay, quite a pliable clay, and it will condition quite quickly. I'm just going to put it through the machine. Right. And having cut it up into a few little slices, it should go through quite easily. my <coughs> whole block as I'm starting to condition it but you can see there's a serrated kind of edge and you, you must get rid of this edge unless you're going to use it in your design but you should get rid of this edge otherwise um, it'll break up while you while you fire it so I'm folding up in the center and putting it through the machine and I have to do this quite a few times probably up to 40 times through here. So I break the, the, the tape just now and carry on doing this. Now you can see that I've started to blend the second piece of clay here, but it's still not ready because I've still got this rough edge, but you can, you know, you can use the rough edge in, in it if you want to do that. I don't know if the, if the camera can catch it, but can you see there are lines going across this? This is what we call a mica shift. If I just stick this once more through the machine, and maybe again so you can get that, and hold it up here. You can see that there's vague lines left. That's because the wee findings of metal separate out throughout the clay and they leave you with this line. Now you can get rid of that, but you can also keep it if it's a, if it's a look that you want. You can see I'm still needing to carry on blending this piece to make it as finished as the glue on the table, which I've cut into a wee neat uh, rectangle and I've left two or three bits of the edges here that I'm going to use later on. And what I've done is cut it over these. This is a very stiff um, polymer clay blade um, and just cuts everything straight. It's like a big razor, quite sharp for you to watch your fingers. Um, the other one I have I'll show you there, you can see it's a more flexible end, and that's for slicing and maybe cutting circles or putting deliberate lines into that. So I'll just put this thing to here. You can also see that if you want to have a straight edge, um, if when you fold it up you butt the, um, the clay right up tight into the corner of the polymer clay um, 
maker, the, the pasta maker rather, um, you can get a straight edge with that there. So a couple more with this and I should be about ready to show you this Skinner blend. Right, you can now see I've got my two pieces of flat clay, one in the pearl blue and the other one in the gold, and I've cut them to the same size, which means I've got exactly the same amounts of clay in each hand and the same depth. So I'm then now going to fold them in half and then kind of into a, a sort of triangle shape, which if you see it in all the books, it's quite posh and tidy edges, but it's, it doesn't, that's not vital as long as it's the same amount of clay. So I'll fold it over again and just get my triangles of clay that are roughly about the same depth. Now I take the two long ends of my triangles and press them. Now, at some point during this, you're going to think you've lost it, but you won't have. So again, on your fattest setting, on the widest setting, which is one on this machine, I'm going to now put this clay through here. I'm going to put it through very carefully the first time because I don't want it to separate. And the thing to remember is, pull it out, bring it up to the top and repeat that process by folding it in the center and always keep it in the same direction don't come across the way because you'll lose the design you'll lose the pattern if I go this way I'll, I'll lose it so I'm keeping it this way bringing it up and the, the join edge is going through the, the clay and this is not just for no reason um, very similar to normal ceramic clays um, you will end up with ear bubbles if you're not careful and the last thing you want when you made a really nice design is to have a great big ear bubble in the middle. So I will just continue now rolling this clay through the fattest setting on the machine, bringing it up to the top continually through like this. And as I said, you'll probably think, oh no, what a mess and I've lost it. You'll see in a minute. So here's my blue to gold blend, and I'm just going to put through one last couple of times to see how it goes. to the lights and you can see it a bit better. I'll stick it on this. Um, you can see I've got my blue to gold graduation now on there. I think probably that's the better side. So that's a Skinner blend. Alright, I've now wrapped the blended clay and a piece of cardboard tube and seal the edge of the clay along here with this liquid clay. And I've cut out a couple of wee discs uh, about the same size as the diameter which I'm just about to put some liquid clay on the edge here. it into itself, not too rough, it should sit quite well, but this can come in and out of the oven a few times to make it what you want.
that's my dog snoring in the background, by the way. Okay. Sealess edge, and that's probably ready for its first firing. Just catch all the one of these wee tools here. And then I'll put a better edge on it once I've taken it back out of the oven. And this is just the bottom edge of my um, pot. A clay will stick to the clay when it's um, unfired by itself quite nicely, but I'm just putting a wee bit of this liquid clay on it just to make it that little bit stronger. So I'm just going to put a wee cane on the bottom here. So it'll sit on something. There we go. Let's cut it to the right size. Find this bleed. Just pinch together. Because it will pinch together while it's wet, so it's okay, but it's just to make it a bit stronger. I'm just laying my edge in so I can't see it. I'm now going to put it onto a glass tile or a, any kind of, you know, Pyrex dish or you know anything basically that can go in the oven quite safely. Okay.